how to enjoy your period. Hmm, sounds bizarre, right? Maybe even impossible? Believe me, I know. But I've come to the most beautiful point in my journey as a woman where I genuinely enjoy bleeding. I believe every female has a fundamental right to enjoy her period. And that might offend you, and that's totally okay. But maybe instead of feeling offended, try feeling curious. Because today I'm going to share with you my five best tips to actually enjoy your period. My name is Gabrielle and welcome to Rosie Moons. Tip number one, slow down and rest as much as you can. If you're feeling the need to drink a bunch of coffee while on your period to keep up with your life's demands, maybe you should just slow down. If you're finding yourself taking painkillers while on your period, you need to slow down. I can tell you from experience that pushing yourself beyond your cyclical capacity might work in the short term, but in the long term, it will just most likely lead to burnout. Women are 32% more likely to experience burnout than their male counterparts. I believe this is because women have been taught to completely ignore their cyclical nature to the point where they're ignorant to it and they're trying to keep up with a society that is designed for the male hormonal prototype. The fact is that males have a 24 hour hormonal cycle and females have a 28 day hormonal cycle on average. Now I'll get to these comparisons in a future video, but for now, my number one tip when it comes to enjoying your period is just simply allowing yourself to rest. Take a day or two off if you can while you're bleeding. I know that's not totally accessible for everyone, but if you can just take some time off, even if it's half a day, do it. You will not regret it. Rest is absolutely essential during this phase of your menstrual cycle. The menstrual cycle is actually a microcosmic reflection, an expression of the seasons of nature. It is only in the rest of winter that the abundance of summer can truly come into fruition, right? And whether or not you believe yourself to be a part of nature, you are. And the fact is, there are just so many things that can be put on the back burner while you take care of yourself and rest. And that includes your job. That includes work. Women can do everything while bleeding. Anything you can possibly imagine. But that doesn't mean we should. Burnout in females can absolutely be avoided. And in my opinion, it can be avoided by just simply resting on the first, second, or third day of your period, whatever is most accessible for you. Just try it, okay? And thank me later. Number two, create rituals to make it a special time. Activities such as painting with my period blood, using it as a face mask, giving it back to the earth or watering it to my plants. These practices have allowed me to actually commune with my blood, to have a relationship with it, instead of just following the cultural norm of being as discreet as possible, disposing of it as quickly as possible, washing my hands clean of it because it's such a dirty thing. No, it's so far from that. It's so much more than that. Women bleed for an average of 10 whole years of their life in total. That's 3,650 days of bleeding in their life, in their menstrual lifetime. In my opinion, not having a relationship with your blood is almost completely insane. Creating opportunities to explore, you know, the color of your blood, the texture, the scent, the viscosity, etc., is crucial to enjoying your period. Not to mention that menstruation is the sixth vital sign in the female body, which means these characteristics of our menstrual blood can actually identify and indicate certain attributes of our health and well being. Number three. Explore period products to find the most supportive option for you and your life. When I tried a menstrual cup for the first time, I literally never used a tampon ever again. It was that much of a game changer. I also love the idea of not producing so much waste because of my period. When using disposable menstrual products, 
the average female will use and dispose of between 5,000 to 15,000 pads and tampons in their menstrual lifetime. Pads are estimated to take about 500 to 800 years to biodegrade. Most of these products packaging is made from plastic, which doesn't even fully biodegrade at all. Nowadays, there are so many awesome products on the market that make menstruating so simple and easy. And our predecessors, our female ancestors that bled before us, they would literally be jealous of the menstrual care products we have access to. And for me, this includes menstrual cups, like I mentioned earlier, reusable period underwear, reusable pads that you can just clip into your underwear, menstrual discs. Oh my god, I tried a menstrual disc a couple months ago and it was awesome. There are times where disposable menstrual products are obviously necessary and if you're going to use them, just be sure that they're organic cotton. The pesticides and chemicals such as bleach that are in conventional period products are not supposed to be anywhere near your vagina or labia. They actually may be contributing to the reoccurring bacterial vaginosis and yeast infections that so many women experience. Try to find companies who actually care about your vaginal and overall health and well-being instead of those that sacrifice those values for greater profit. With 800 million people menstruating on a daily basis worldwide, it's no surprise that companies take advantage of this demand and create shitty products, let's be honest. Try your best to try out different options, choose wisely, do some research, watch some review videos on YouTube, and figure out what option works best for you and your lifestyle because it will be totally different from woman to woman. Tip number four, track your entire menstrual cycle, not just your period. Your month-ish long cycle is so much more than just your period. Your period, the bloody part that is, is actually just the result of a string of hormonal occurrences throughout your menstrual cycle that are constantly ever-changing and contributing to your perception, your perspective, and therefore your experience on a day-to-day -day basis. When we learn about the physiological significance of our ever-changing hormonal landscape, everything just starts to make sense. When you understand why you're bleeding and or experiencing menstrual discomfort, you are one step closer to enjoying the overall process. And lucky for you, I have an entire video on my channel detailing the menstrual cycle from a scientific point of view that I will link right here and down below for you to go watch after this one. Number five, don't be afraid to let people know that you're bleeding. The only reason why periods have a stigma about them in the first place is because they aren't openly talked about. If you need any support with your daily tasks during your period, such as your expectations at work, caring for yourself or your children, cooking and cleaning, just let people know. And don't be afraid to tell them why you need their support. Most people in their right minds will totally understand and be willing to support you, especially those that love you. The more open we are about our periods, the less taboo they become. We don't have to pretend like we don't bleed for 10 years in our lifetime. Just be kind and open about it though, because I have learned from experience, I've learned the hard way that, you know, aggressively asking for support <laughs> because you're on your period doesn't usually go over well and it probably actually just won't help at all. So just try to be kind and express in a very vulnerable and open way. And if someone judges you for opening up about your natural bodily processes, then they're the problem. You are not the problem. Your body is not the problem. I will say that my husband knows exactly how to support me. He'll give me the space I need and he's able to do this and show up for me in this way all because I communicated with him openly about my period and how I'm feeling and what my energy levels are and how I need support from him during that time. And now when he knows I'm bleeding, he just shows up and I'm really thankful for that. Maybe I just know a lot of good men, but I think 
think you'd be surprised how supportive men can actually be for the female experience if we just open up to them and allow them to be. This is a whole other tangent that I just shouldn't be getting into here, but <laughs> thank you so much for watching if you made it this far and please share this video with anyone who you feel may benefit. And if you like these kinds of videos, be sure to hit the like and subscribe for more. And here's that other video that I mentioned earlier, the menstrual cycle from a scientific point of view that you can go ahead and watch now.